Okay, welcome back to uh, solving transportation problem. We are at the step of checking whether the solution is optimal using the modified distribution method or the UV method. In our previous example, we have shown, uh, we have solved a problem and checked and confirmed that the solution we obtained using the VAM is actually optimal. So I have another example here, which has been solved in the background. So let's consider this um, a transportation problem. And then suppose that using the VAM, uh, this is the initial basic feasible solution. Okay. So this one has four rows and three columns. Okay. So once you get the initial solution, uh, these are this is my U1, my U2, U3, and U4. Then V1, that before I give assign U4, it's equal to zero, and like that. So the row or column with the highest number of allocations is the last one, this one, because there are three allocations. Hope you can see them. So that, that row, I assign it zero. So that means U4 is equal to zero. So let's form the equations. Uh, we have said this, the maximum allocation is in row four with three allocations, hence U4 is equal to that, uh, to zero. Then uh, how are the equations looking like? Make this small. So we need an equation for this cell, which is U1 plus V1 is equal to two. So the equations are formed here. I think I've interchanged the order, but uh, if I make this small, um, for the first cell, we are talking about U1, V1 is equal to one. Uh, in my list, I've put it here. Uh, so where is that? U1, V1 is equal to two, is equal to two. Eh? So the last one there. This one, the first cell. Then uh, this cell here, that is a U2 plus V3, this one. The next, this one, that is U3 plus V2. So this one, I think I've listed them in, in the reverse order. And we have already said that V4 is equal to zero. So if we say V4 is equal to zero, that means from here we can just solve and say that V2 is equal to six. So that I've written the solutions here. So I hope you are able to solve the rest. Huh? Uh, because once you get V2, now you can come to V2, you put it here, you put six there, it means that U3 is equal to minus two. What we have there. Okay, so if you have U3 is equal to two, where else can we put it? Or can we continue using V2? Um, which other value can we use here? V2. So uh, again, here using U4, we can get V1 is equal to what? Is equal to one. And then here, we can get, using U4 is equal to zero, we can get V3 is equal to two. And then uh, since we have obtained V3 is equal to two, we can get U2. So if V3 is equal to two, that means U2 is equal to minus one. And then finally, 
if you have v1 is equal to 1, we can have u1 is equal to 1. So those values are the ones that uh, I've indicated here. So I think you can find out that. Then after that, you go to the cell evaluations, the DIJs using this formula. So for the unallocated cells, and here for the sake of time, you will verify that these are the cell evaluations. And this being the cell evaluations, you notice that this one is less than zero. So that means that solution is not optimal. Solution is not optimal. So we're saying since this cell here, since D22 is less than zero, what you're calling D22, the solution is not optimum. So how do we go about that? How do we uh, maximize the solution? The solution. Thus, we give the maximum allocation, which I'm, I'm calling a phi, the symbol phi, Greek symbol phi. You can call it any other value. You can call it E or whatever. You give, you assign maximum allocation to this cell and make necessary changes by forming a loop. So you're going to form what you call a loop. A loop is like a continuum like that. But here we work with a loop which comprises of horizontal and vertical lines. You come back to the same place using a series of horizontal and vertical lines. Like that one is a loop. It can be rectangular like this. So this is a loop. It doesn't have to be a regular. Uh, it doesn't have to be a rectangular or square. It can be something like this. And this is how you proceed. Huh? So this being our table, so our, our cell D22 or cell 22, uh, this is row one column. So this is the cell. So this is the cell we're talking about. So we're saying in this cell, there was no allocation. If you check the initial solution, if you check the initial solution, there was no allocation. So it looked like this. Let me work with this. In this cell, there is no allocation. Here. So we're saying in that cell, we need to transport some items there. But how many are we going to transport there? We have to adjust. So we are going to transport some number here. So you mark that cell like that, and you mark it as positive because you are going to transport, we are going to transport some goods to this place. So you mark it positive. Then from this cell, you form a complete loop. You form a loop. And this loop comprises of horizontal and vertical lines in such a way that the corners, the corner, the corners of the loop are allocated cells. So I need to draw a series of horizontal and vertical lines in such a way that, I mean, from this cell and back to the same, using a series of horizontal and vertical lines. So I don't know whether that is obvious, but this is how the loop will look like. So we'll start from here. We come there. We go down. We come here and we go up. So we have formed a complete loop. We have formed a complete loop. So the first cell where we are located, we put it positive. Then we assign positive, negative in alternating way. So that is positive. So that means here we are going to transport some, some, some goods there. Here we're going to reduce whatever we are transporting to that place. Here we're going to add. 
you're going to subtract. So you notice that the pluses and minuses are balances because you don't want to change these totals. You don't want to change that total. You don't want to change this total. You don't want to change this total. So you want to change the allocations that we had made to the cells that uh, to the cells where the, the plus and minuses are located. We want to change that, but without interfering with the row totals and the column totals corresponding to uh, where the loop is passing. So what is the maximum amount? The question is, what is the maximum amount that we can put here? That's what this is where I'm calling phi without interfering with this and that and that and that. And the best way to get that answer is to find the smallest number between that cell where we have the minuses, uh, between where you can uh, there and there. And also here, what is the smallest number that we can find there? Two. Two is the smallest number because here we are transporting two units, here we are transporting 10 units, here we are transporting eight units. So the smallest number that we can bring here without interfering with the raw totals here is to put a two here. You do plus two there. And once you do plus two there, here you do minus two. Then here you do plus two. Then here you do minus two. So once you do that, in that cell you are left with two, you are going to transport two units. In the other corner, you're going to transport six units. Then in the lower corner, you're going to transport 12 units. In the other corner, you're going to transport zero units. So that's how the allocation will change. Let me see if it is done well here. I didn't want to use this diagram because it has already been done. So this is the cell that we're talking about, which was initially not allocated. But now we must transport to that place. Then we form a loop, which is starting from here to there, down here, here, and up. So the corners of the loop must be allocated cells. You can, you can have your loop pass wherever you want to pass, as long as you have horizontal lines and vertical lines. And the corner cells all the time are allocated cells. So you come up with such a loop. Then you check out of the numbers that you are transporting. Here you are transporting eight, here you are transporting 10, then here we are transporting two. What is the maximum number that you can bring here without interfering with this number, uh, this number, this number, and this number? And the number is this number here, the smallest number out of those three. So here it means that you take you add two now. Here you take away two. Here you add this is what this is ten. Huh? So here you add two. That means here they are going to transport twelve there, and you are going to minus two, which becomes zero. So how does your new solution look like now? Uh, let's copy it down here. Okay, so this is how the new table will look like. And these are the changes that we made. So in our initial solution, we were transporting nothing here. So now we are transporting two units. And now here, instead of transporting eight, we are transporting six. And here we were transporting two, now we are transporting zero. And clearly you can see the cost is very high. And then here, instead of transporting 10, now we are transporting 12. You can see it's better to transport here than to transport here. So those are the changes we made in our on initial table. So once you do this, that is now like iteration one. Usually we call them iterations. Eh? Check whether the solution is optimal. Check whether solution is optimal. So again, you compute the use, the Vs, then 
you compute the cell evaluations using the new using the new table here. You compute the cell evaluations and check whether all the cell evaluations are non-negative. Then you know the solution is optimal. If it's not optimal, you keep repeating the process until you come to an optimal solution. So that process uh, is repetitive until the solution converges uh, to a point where all the DIJs are either positive or they're equal to zero. That's when you have the, um, the optimal solution. So that's the process of optimizing uh, uh, transportation problem using the modified distribution or using the UV method. You can, uh, you can continue this example and check when the solution converges or if it has actually converged. So let's stop there for today.